Hi, my name is Olivia and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about some very popular books that I have absolutely no interest in reading. So with that, let's get straight into the video. These are in no particular order, but the first book on my list is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. I think this one hardly needs an introduction, but it's a Twilight retelling from Edward's perspective. Personally, I think the Twilight series was already unnecessarily drawn out with just the four books in the series before this one was even announced. I started losing interest in the series right around the third book while I was in the middle of reading that one, and I had very little interest in continuing. But I figured that I'd made it so far into the series that another book and a half wouldn't kill me, and I did want to see how all of the plot points and character arcs would ultimately be resolved. I picked up the fourth book out of some small shred of hope that the series would somehow redeem itself and end with a bang. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me, and the fourth book was one of my least favorite books in the series. Setting aside the plot of the preceding books, I found Meyer's writing to leave very much to be desired. It was lackluster, dull, and wasn't particularly lyrical or literary. At times, her writing was overly cringeworthy and painful to get through, and she incorporated far too many tired, overdone tropes in the series, which was another point that had me not wanting to continue onward. I also didn't find the characters to be anything special. Most of them were pretty dull and flat as far as characters go, and I had trouble connecting with and sympathizing with these characters because they didn't seem very realistic to me. With respect to Midnight Sun in particular, I don't see a need to rehash the entire first book just from an alternate point of view. Myers has already locked herself into many of the same scenes and conversations, and it's going to be very hard to add enough substance to this book to warrant it being its own separate book. There's a reason that Twilight was originally only written from Bella's perspective, and I think viewing events through Edward's eyes is going to add very, very little to the series as a whole. More than anything, this feels like a half-hearted cash grab from the author. I would have preferred hearing an announcement that the next book in the host series was being published, or that a new standalone or a new series altogether was in the works. I think Twilight had a time and a place, and I think we've since surpassed that point. Next on the list is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. This book starts out following Mia, a single mother and artist who begins renting an apartment from the Richardson family. She moves in with her daughter Pearl, and the pair of them quickly pique the interest of the Richardson children. Unbeknownst to the Richardsons, Mia has some secrets from her past that she's trying to bury and keep buried. Partway through the book, the Richardsons' family friends try to adopt a Chinese-American baby, which sparks a custody battle that quickly becomes the talk of the town. This causes a rift to develop between the Richardsons and Mia, and the Richardsons begin digging to uncover information about Mia's past. I'm not a fan of books that primarily focus on familial relationships and familial drama, which is, unsurprisingly, one of the main reasons that I stay away from the contemporary genre altogether. Based on the summary alone, it seems like this book was marketed as a thriller, or at the very least a pseudo-thriller, especially with all of the references to Mia's dark and mysterious past. I'm doubtful that Mia's past is going to serve a central role in the book. I think that it's going to be swept under the rug for most of the book and buried beneath hordes and hordes of drama and gossip throughout the town. I would much prefer that this be a focal point of the novel instead of just a subplot that's used to further the rest of the book. It should also come as no surprise that I'm a plot-driven reader, and this book comes across as something that's far more character-driven and slower paced. Ultimately, I think I would lose interest pretty quickly in this one, and even have trouble finishing it. Therefore, I've decided to stay away from it altogether. Next, I wanted to talk about The Lord of the Rings Trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is a fantasy series that's set in Middle-earth and follows the hobbit Frodo Baggins. At the beginning of book one, Frodo inherits a magical ring from his cousin Bilbo, and this sets off a chain of events that leads him on the adventure of a lifetime. I picked up The Hobbit a few years ago after seeing some of the films, and I absolutely loved the book. It was a fun, easy read, and I really enjoyed the characters, world building, and plot, and I can see how it would appeal to a wide range of audiences. While Tolkien's writing style wasn't my favorite, the other aspects of the book more than compensated for this, and it resulted in a 5-star read for me. Since then, I've tried picking up the first book in the Lord of the Rings series, The Fellowship of the Ring multiple times, and I have failed miserably on every single occasion. I don't think I even managed to make it past the 50 page mark before giving up and setting it aside for a later time. Of the portion that I did read, the plot seemed non-existent, and the pacing was painfully slow. 
I couldn't stand the endless descriptions of Frodo journeying through the wilderness without ever seeming to arrive at his final destination or doing anything of real consequence along the way. Due to a combination of factors, I've concluded that Tolkien's writing style just isn't for me. It's far too meandering and descriptive to capture my attention and really draw me into the story. It was a huge boundary in allowing me to get interested and engaged in this first book in the series, and I don't think pushing through further into the book would have helped with this. All in all, I think I've given this series a fair shot, and I have no plans to pick it back up again in the future. Next on the list is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Admittedly, I don't know much about this one, but it's set in 2044, and it follows a cast of characters who spend much of their time in video games, engaged in virtual realities. Many reviews compared this book to games such as World of Warcraft. I've never played World of Warcraft, I don't really know what the premise of the game is, and my video game experience is marginal at best. Since I'm not a fan of playing video games myself, I don't think I would enjoy following characters who are constantly engaged in a video game for most, if not all, of the book. From what I've gathered, this book also contains a lot of pop culture references from the 1980s which is not a decade that I'm particularly well versed in, and I think most of these references would go straight over my head. Consequently, I don't think this book would have had the same appeal for me as it did for so many other readers, and I wouldn't enjoy some of the most highly praised components of the book. Therefore, I think this one would be a recipe for disaster, and I plan on staying very far away from it. Next on the list is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which is part of the Millennium Trilogy by Steve Larsen. This series starts off with a member of one of Sweden's wealthiest families disappearing under mysterious circumstances, and her uncle decides to launch an investigation into her disappearance. To do so, he recruits the help of a journalist and a hacker turned freelance investigator, and as they begin to work through information, they discover some dark secrets and lots of corruption. I've repeatedly heard that this book is unnecessarily graphic and violent, depicting in detail scenes of murder, assault, and rape. While these are fairly common themes in some of my most frequently read genres, like mystery and thriller, they usually aren't described in extreme detail. In the few cases where explicit detail is included, it's usually for some very specific purpose, either furthering the plot, furthering the characters and their development, or setting up the scene for some future twists and turns. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like this is the case for this book in particular, and I'm not interested in reading scenes that delve in-depth into these topics for no real purpose. I've also heard that there's far too much detail in general, which is likely a product of Larson's writing style. Personally, I don't enjoy flowery, overly descriptive writing, and that's usually something that causes me to lose interest in a book pretty quickly. Along the same lines, it seems like there's an unnecessary emphasis and too much detail concerning business and journalism, neither of which is something that I'm particularly experienced in or is really my cup of tea. Overall, there are so many factors working against this book from my perspective, and I can't foresee any redeeming qualities compensating for all of these negatives. The last book that I wanted to talk about is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenager. This book follows a married couple, Claire and Henry. Henry has been diagnosed with chronodisplacement disorder, which causes him to become misplaced in time, traveling to a variety of time points in both the past and the future. The novel provides insights into how his condition affects their marriage and their lives overall. Once again, contemporary is just not my genre, and this book seems to encompass just about every single trope that I cannot stand in contemporaries. It sounds like more of a love story than anything else, and I'm just not particularly interested in books that have romance as the focal point. I'm fairly confident that I would find this a challenging read to get into and interested in, and I think it would also make it difficult for me to finish this one. Consequently, I've decided not to pick this one up. Maybe in the future I'll revisit the movie, but that's also not a guarantee. Let me know in the comments below if there are any books that are very popular or overhyped that you're just not interested in picking up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.